Hello and welcome everyone to the New Paradigm Astrology Community Mini Readings for 2019. My name is Kai Pacha and I am a representative of the New Paradigm Astrology. <laughs> Uh, so today we're going to look at charts, and <clears throat> uh, I want to say, first of all, disclaimer, disclaimer, this is not a reading. This is a mini reading, and by that we mean that it is a reading for educational purposes only. <clears throat> Maybe not only, uh, hopefully you do get something out of it, you know, as an individual, but what I really want to share with the community and with, you know, with everybody is the way that I do a chart reading. And that can be different for every astrologer. Every astrologer does their readings their own way. No, you know, uh, this is just the way that I have uh, come to doing it. And, and that is, to me, what is really important. And it's the good takeaway out of, uh, out of you know, this session. Okay, so that you can look at any chart and use the kind of steps that I use uh, to obtain uh, much greater results um, because I usually prepare for a reading uh, and I prepare for a reading beforehand because I have astrological software. I'm going to show you my astrological software. I use Solar Fire and I do transit reports. Those transit reports will tell me I do two different ones. I do one report that goes back seven years and forward seven years and tells me only the houses. And I look at what planets are transiting what houses for how long a period of time. So we can see what transits, you know, if something crossed the ascendant three years ago, I want to know about it. You know, if Neptune is, you know, uh, you know, coming up to the descendant three years from now, I want to know about it. So I look at the transiting, you know, house positions and I do particularly with Jupiter out to Pluto. OK, then I do another transit report and that transit report, OK, is just for 2018, 19 and 20 and it's only going Jupiter out along with the progressed moon. I'm not going to get into the progressed moon today with you too much. That's a little, uh, you know, advanced. But I look at the uh, aspects and, I, and the major aspects. I look at conjunctions, squares, trines, and oppositions of Jupiter out to Pluto to all of the natal planets. And you'll see this transit report for Christine, maybe like right now. <laughs> We're going to look at Christine's chart, okay? And then I will show you the transit reports and then I will start the clock, uh, you know, talking because I do wanna give her 20 minutes interpretation. And I don't know that I'm gonna watch the chat box that closely. Um, but if you do have a question, you can try to pop it in there. I'll meet you in Amsterdam. Yeah, good. Okay, there's Daniela to help me out. Hi, Daniela. Yeah, I was okay. just gonna say, if you guys have questions, you can use the Q&A box. And, um, and if we can get to them at the end, we will. Great, thank you. Okay. Here we go with a view chart. And of course, I thought that I was starting with Keska, but I'm not. So I will uh, go down here to Christine. Here's Christine. I use the double wheel. Okay, you can see that uh, uh, Christine is a Aquarius, double Aquarius, sun and moon, both in Aquarius, and uh, Scorpio rising. And that, so her natal chart is the inner chart, and the transits, where everything is right now, as you can see, Mercury is conjunct Saturn <laughs> right now. <laughs> uh, this is all in the outside circle. 
So to get to the reports that I use, if you use Solar Fire or a similar program, you click on Transits. And I hope you guys can see this. I'm gonna go down here to Christine and just view. Now, do you guys uh, see the uh, transit report? Shake your head, Christine. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. I can see okay. That. So here you can see that her progressed moon in January of 2016 hit the seventh house. In a reading, I would pay very strong attention to that because there's a strong emphasis on relationship and partnership while the progressed moon is in the seventh house and it's gonna stay in the seventh house until July of 2018, bye bye. Then it's gonna get really freaking heavy for Christine <laughs> because her progressed moon as of July of 2018 has gone into the eighth house of death, resurrection, transformation, yeah, and deep inner work about and dealing with the mysteries of life and needing something more, something deeper in her life at this time. And that energy is going to be going on until December of 2020. So you see how important this is. We can see that right now, 2019, okay, Jupiter, went back and forth over her ascendant from December of 17, it was direct, went retrograde June of 18, and so she's starting a new Jupiter cycle as of August of 18. So look at, the moon goes into the eighth house in July, Jupiter crosses over the ascendant in August. Okay, so this says right away, big stuff, change, you know, new beginnings. And this new beginning involves a deepening of, okay, you know, her understanding of love, sex, emotional psychology, uh, you know, the mysteries of life very powerfully. Jupiter then in next month goes into her second house. And I also, sorry about that, I pay attention to the moon's nodes. Yeah. The north node of the moon is moving through her uh, ninth house because they go backwards. So it went into her ninth house in May of 17, and it's gonna stay there until March of 19, and then it's gonna, then she's gonna have not only the progressed moon, but she's going to have the north node going through her eighth house. <laughs> so you can kind of see what we might be talking about today before you even see the person. <laughs> okay, and then we can see that Saturn, Saturn is in her second house right now, it's been in her second house since December of 16. It's going to stay there until January of 2020. So this just gives you an idea. Okay, I mean, we really look at, you know, these are the big transits and it's just nice to see when a planet goes into a house and when that planet is leaving the house. <laughs> and the next thing is we look at uh, planets to planets. Yeah, the planets to planets then is right here. And I'm going back to 2018, but not today. Let's just go. And we can see that she's had Pluto hitting the south node of her moon, okay? March of 19, June of 19, and January of 20. Need we say more? Let go goodbye. And if you don't say goodbye, it will be taken away. <laughs> there are some things that need to be cleaned out. It's a clean the cupboard time. Yes, is in terms of the entire psyche. And then we can also see that she's got Uranus square the sun. It's approaching, right? June of 19. But hey, this is a computer. It says June 25th of 2019. But as astrologers, we know Okay, that Uranus moves very slowly and she's probably feeling, okay, the urge to break free, to liberate, to make new sudden changes in her life. Okay, ready or not, these changes will be happening. Particularly, I always say that a Uranus transit lasts for 18 months. So here, it's really only going on, you know, for maybe a year, but you've got to give it Give it another three months on each side. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So 
Let's just come back here and see what's going on, if anything's going on today. Look at January 12th. Now, the progressed moon moves one degree a month. Okay, so yes, it's exact January 12th, but she's got the progressed moon trine, the north node of the moon, for the entire month of January. It's very nice, very smooth, very beautiful. And that will help to take care and ease up a little bit on this Saturn square Mars, which is going on, you know, it's approaching now, but it's really going on for most of the year. We could say for Christine that 2019 is a Saturn square Mars and a Uranus square Sun kind of a year, if you know what that means. <laughs> we'll get into what that means. Obviously, Pluto is squaring Saturn for a long time. Okay, we could say a Pluto transit takes three years. So it was approaching in 2018. It's full on square Saturn, all of 2019. And then in 2020, it's starting to loosen its grip. Yeah, but it's really, it's a Pluto transit is a very deep change that takes a long time to process. We already talked about it south the nodes. So these are just some of the things that you can uh, do when you've got your astrology software. So for now, you can see just from the chart, Uranus is up here at 28 Aries. And you can see that as soon as it goes into Taurus, boom, it's going to square that sun. Yeah, she'll really feel it when it goes into Taurus, which is not a couple of weeks or something. Yeah. And Saturn, transiting Saturn, 12 degrees Capricorn right now. You can see she's got that Mars at 15. Yeah. So these are the transits we're talking about. You can see that Pluto is at 21. Her south node of the moon is at 22. These are the three major transits for 2019. Right now, she's got the north node of the moon crossing over into the eighth house. We already talked about that. Got it? So this just gives you a little bit of a context. But what I always say when I do chart readings, I start with your past lives, where you've been and what you've done determines why you came back. So we go into the past lives, then we go into the future, soul intention for this life. And then I come back to the transits of 2018, 19 and 20 and get more specific. Today, I don't know how specific we will get. However, it's very helpful to people to simply know what is a habit pattern from the past, whether it's childhood or past lives, wherever you're coming from. What's the past and what is the future? Where have I been and where am I trying to go? That in itself will help them to navigate through the part, whatever transits they are dealing with this year. Okay? So in order to do that, and I understand that this is a lot of information in very rapid fire, that's why we are recording this webinar, so that you can listen to it and take notes later. <laughs> Just enjoy yourself now. But I read the person like a book with a theme, a plot, and a character. Pluto is the theme, the soul, where she's been, the plot, the action line, okay? How she developed that theme is the south node of the moon, Capricorn, second house. And the third that I say is the character, she has a PhD in her moon sign, Aquarius, okay? So she's very comfortable, known, familiar in Aquarius. And you can start with any one of these three. I usually start with Pluto, but it doesn't really matter. I'm going to be talking about all three of these now and get out of the astro babble into what it means, yeah? You can see that Pluto is conjunct Saturn, loosely conjunct Mars in the sign of Libra. And what do we see that is in common with all of these, right? South node of the moon is in Capricorn. 
Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. Moon is in Aquarius. Aquarius is co-ruled by Saturn. So she has been really, okay, under a lot of pressure, a lot of, you know, expectations, a lot of demands, a lot of duty, a lot of responsibility for many fucking lifetimes. <laughs> she is no stranger to carrying the load. And she may be born with a millstone around her neck. She could have had a hard birth. <laughs> Doctor's trying to get her out, but there's that damn millstone around her neck. <laughs> oh, my God, Christine. So anyway, you know, what we can say, yes, is that this Pluto in the sign of Libra is a soul that has been working with the theme of I want to bring balance, peace, harmony, justice. Yes, <sighs> Social justice, justice and relationships. It's the lawyer. She could have been a lawyer in her past life. Yeah. With a very heavy workload. Because what does the 12th house say? The 12th house is no me, no I, no Christine. The 12th house is the house of spirit. The 12th house is the house of selfless service, giving, victimization and martyrdom. She could have been a pope. <laughs> she could have been a nun. She could have been in the ashram or the courtroom or, you know, the hospital or the prison, just working, trying to bring order, peace, balance and justice to what? You know, we could say that, you know, it was a little bit of a mess. Yes. Now. The other thing that we'll bring in is the south node of the moon in Capricorn. Okay. And these are all three. Let's look at this moon in Aquarius. What else do all of these have in common? A certain amount of loneliness, alienation, and isolation. Separation. Okay. This moon in Aquarius is super intelligent. Conjunct Mercury, super intelligent. The sun there, you know, Aquarians are way ahead of the game. Okay, and air signs, Libra and Aquarius, both super powerful intellectual capacities here that have been developed. And she was probably very high up on the ladder, okay, you know, in terms of she could even have been a public servant. She could have worked in the United Nations and not really had very much of a personal life at all. You see Venus, Sun, Moon, and Mercury in the third house of mental, 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 mental. Oh, my God. Have we got a little Einstein here or what? <laughs> so you got to be real careful talking to Christine because she probably knows more than you do. <laughs> so, and last but not least, the south node of the moon in Capricorn, okay, you know, in the second house. What's the second house? My capacities, my talents, my sense of self-worth, okay? It's like here is a gifted, hardworking, devoted person, full of integrity, has really got it on the ball and, you know, has, you know, got some very high expectations, all of this Aquarius, okay? And don't forget that 12th house is idealistic, idealism. Yeah, they say Libra in the 12th house is the nun because they married Christ, the perfect partner. <laughs> not a lot of sex <laughs> not a lot of drugs and rock and roll but he's the perfect part so there can be this kind of idealism around partnership and relationship kind of like nobody's good enough okay or nobody can understand me or i can't really emotionally bond or connect with anyone because i'm too busy working for the new paradigm <laughs> <laughs> these kinds of issues can come up with these people. You can see that she's very used to what? South Node in Capricorn, busting her butt. Yeah, I'm sure that people know that she's smart. And if you want something done, go to Christine. So Christine always gets people. Could you do this? Could you do that? Could you do the other? You know, and she's, you know, very wanting to. Mars and Libra. Mars and Libra hates confrontation. You know, 
and it doesn't want to get angry, wants to be a people pleaser. So she'll say, oh, yeah, I can do that. And the thing is, she probably does whatever she does better than anybody else does it. So there's another tricky thing here. OK, of egads, you know, now I now they know that I'm, you know, the best and they're going to come back for more. So, you know, she, I am sure, has a very full plate. Now, where does the soul want to go this lifetime? The soul wants to go. So we got a little bit of the past. You see that you kind of see this kind of a thing. Now, the future is the Pluto polarity point. The Pluto polarity point is 26 degrees, 55 minutes of Aries. Yeah, Aries. So she's been a people pleaser, nice person, and we know nice people finish last. Okay, this lifetime she is coming more into out of the air, out of the thinking, out of the yes and the ideas and the computer and the, you know, the spreadsheets and whatever, blah, 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 you know, the finances and the money and running the United Nations. And she's coming into fire, fire. <laughs> I want, I am, I count. What's going on? It's in the sixth house of work. I have to work for myself. <laughs> I have to learn how to speak up and speak the truth and be a warrior. How does she do that? How does she do that? She does that through the north node of the moon. Oh my God, look at that. The north node of the moon is in the eighth house. We know that the eighth house is ruled by, co-ruled by Mars, Mars and Pluto. So here's the other thing. South node of the moon in the second house. I'm just better off alone. You know, life is simple. I put the salt shaker here. I go back. The salt shaker is still there. Very good. Yeah, it makes my life a lot easier. I just, you know, it's like, you know, you get into relationships and they just complicate things, you know, and, and they deal and they bring up emotions and fears and insecurities and, you know, they want sex and this kind of thing. And I'm busy talking and thinking. And it's just like, you know, it's not easy. It's not easy, you know. So it's just like, oh, so the north node of the moon is unknown unfamiliar, undone, untried. And this lifetime, she wants to go there. She wants to come out of her castle into the forest and find Robin Hood <laughs> and ride the dragon. <laughs> yeah, and then it's in the sign of cancer, which is what? You're not gonna ride that dragon with your head. <laughs> Cancer is emotions. Cancer is feeling. So we can say it's going to be a little bit about coming from air, which is clear. Oh, yes. There's this and this and this and this. And I see this and this. And I know this and this and this. And, this, and I'm going to go into cancer, which is like gushy, mushy, wushy. God, it's dark in here. Could somebody turn on a light? I can't see anything. I don't know what the hell is going on. I mean, it's a water sign in a water house. Now. We could say, for better or for worse, thank God. This is not the first time that she has ventured into this territory. And we know that because why? She's got Mars, Saturn, and Pluto square the moon's nodes. You see that? Yeah? You see these little red lines with boxes? Okay. Special condition. When you have planets square the moon's nodes, all right, it says that the soul has tried in her past lifetimes to go from the second house to the eighth house, tried to go from Capricorn to Cancer, but uh, 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 sorry, Christine, you have to do Mars first, Saturn second, and Pluto third, and then, <laughs> <laughs> then you can get to your north node in Cancer in the eighth house, which will in turn fulfill and help you master your Pluto polarity point in Aries in the sixth house. So we have to talk a little bit more, okay, about just what that means. Number one, we can say, Mars in Libra is what? 
I need to assert my will, Mars, where? In Libra, the sign of partnership and relationship. Yeah. And in what particular way? It's in the 11th house. And she's got all this Aquarius. So she's got a certain genius. She has a certain ability and a capacity to step outside, to step above, to step beyond. And she has a certain responsibility. This is Mars conjunct Saturn, okay, to really bring her emotional genius, moon in Aquarius, her capacity to see into the deepest, deepest realms of the human psyche and bring up all the work and all the resources and all the intelligence, second and third house, south node of the moon and the moon herself, okay? You know, she's born, she's done a lot of work. She has opened up her third eye. She has done a certain amount of liberating and awakening before, but she may very well have kept it to herself. Yeah? It's like, you know what? Hmm. I'm going to keep it to myself, you know, uh, you know, the people at the bank don't want to hear about astrology, meditation and the tarot, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, you know, uh, you know, maybe the people in my family, okay, you know, don't really want to embrace my spiritual values or my truth. Or maybe when I go out with guys, all they want is my body. And I, you know, and I really have a lot more to me that I want to be honored and respected and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So you can see that this North node of the moon in the eighth house, the eighth house is the house of conflict. It's conflict with other people's values, other people's money, other people's resources, what other people are holding on to. She's going here from the second house of, I've got it all together. I live in the Garden of Eden. I've got, you know, my, you know, my refrigerator full and my bank account full and everything is da, 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 da. And she's going into hell. The eighth house, okay, is the underworld. This is the house of depth psychology. Okay, this is psychoanalysis, this is shamanism, this is hospice and emergency rooms and, you know, red lights and suicide hotlines and, you know, people on the edge, you know, maybe addicts or, you know, homeless, you know, street people. Or, I mean, this is like where you're dealing with the deep, dark ugliness of life. And she may prefer, of course, Aquarius does prefer the jet set. The elite, the light, the clear, the airy, the office, the air conditioned office, <laughs> you know? And so, you know, part of this lifetime is, you know what? You know, you could be comfortable in this 12th house, ashram, monastery, you know, uh, convent, wherever, you know, the artist's studio where I write my books and I sit behind a screen or, you know, I'm just not, I'm kind of one of the untouchables, you know, like nobody can get me. And come out, expose her truth, her values. She is an elder, a wisdom keeper. And these values can have a lot to do with what? You see Venus there, yeah? The values around the feminine, values around feminism, values, you know, that are, you know, have to do with raising up the consciousness around the power of the feminine. So we see that she is to go out and to leave her comfort zone, okay, of being alone and risk. And here's where we can say that she has not only trust issues, but control issues. Because Aquarius and Capricorn and Saturn, Pluto, she's used to having control. In the past, she was the boss. Hello. You know, but she also wants to do these skip steps is Libra. You know, it's like, okay, whoa. I'm going to come down a bit and you're going to come up a bit and we're going to meet right here in the middle. All right. <laughs> you know, and, and that involves me exposing my truth 
putting my cards on the table. Maybe I have to be the first one to show my hand, to show my fears, my insecurities, you know, around maybe my sexuality or my body or, you know, you know, this, you know, my emotional, you know, you know, illogical, irrational, you know, energy. Because this is the other thing that we can see. This moon in Aquarius is a fixed sign. And Saturn, Pluto, Mars does not really want to change every day either. So we can also see that what? I say that she's in the school of Scorpio. You, your rising sign is what you are consciously learning to integrate and become more of in your life and in your world. So she is learning. She's in the school of power, sexual power, financial power, intellectual power, you know, the power of uh, influence and fame. So she's here to kind of come out of hiding and deal with these big egos, in some cases, big assholes. OK, and possibly, you know, straighten them out. Yeah. This is a me too kind of a chart if I ever saw one. It's just like, you know what, you know, I said yes, 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 and I'm a victim, I'm a victim, and I'm a victim, and I'm not a victim anymore, God damn it. Boom. <laughs> you know, this Mars, you know, this, this uh, uh, Mars Saturn and, uh, you know, Mars ruling the ascendant, Scorpio. I always say Scorpio rising people are agents of Kali. You are to become a warrior Yes, you are an ambassador of Shiva, the destroyer. Not only yourself and your identity, because it is your rising sign, but you attract, you are a people changer. She is a shaman. She is a therapist. And anybody that comes into contact with Christine has an unconscious soul intention to be transformed through that relationship. And this is good for her to know. Yeah. It's like, you know what, if you're going to mess with me, guess what? You know, I am also, it's a two way street and you are never, you're not going to walk away the same person that you, you know, came to me as I'm a people changer. I change people's lives. Yeah. So you can see, you know, very powerfully that Saturn crossed over her ascendant, you know, maybe uh, four years ago, five years ago, Jupiter crossed over her ascendant this year. So, you know, it's last year. You can see, okay, you know, that she's beginning this uh, like a new cycle. And, you know, 82, 92, 2002, 2012, you know, she's, you know, late 30s, right? You can talk, Christine. How old are you? Yes, yes. Late 30. 36. One more time. 36. Mm -hmm. It's coming up to that moon's node return. Very powerful point of destiny. Let's see. We can go right back over here to these transits and see when is that? but it's a mini reading, so I don't know that I'm really gonna, but. Yeah, Kay, pretty much time is up, we gotta, we gotta keep it moving. Okay, April 7th. Yeah, you see April 7th is uh, the moon's node return, yeah? Mm -hmm. So this is a big year of Uranus coming up to square the sun, Saturn coming up to square Mars. Yes, you are going to have to fight your way out of, and what you just want to remember is, it's a paper bag. <laughs> it may seem and feel like this is all very real for you, okay? Like there's a lot at stake, you know, people are counting on you or relying on you, or, you know, if you drop the ball, you know, all kinds of shit's going to fall apart, and, da -da 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 -da. and you got to do it anyway. You know, this is a year of big liberation for you. It's a real time, okay, that you've been building up through your 20s and through your 30s. Everything has been building up to Uranus square the sun for the last 21 years. So this is a very big year for you, and you need to put your foot down 
lay down the line, lay boundaries, be clear, and take a chance. Yeah. And it's like, love me or leave me, you know, but I am going to, you know, I'm going to like, I'm going to expose, you know, not just my thoughts and ideas. I am going to expose my needs and my fears and my, my soul. And, and you're not going to meet that soul partner. Okay. Until you are ready to open up your soul, right? So it's like, you know what? And I just say this to all my female clients. When you talk to a man, you are talking to all men. When you find what you need to find in you to speak Mm -hmm. who you are to anybody, you're speaking it to the universe. The power of the word is phenomenal. I don't know where her Chiron is, but, you know, there's a lot of third house emphasis here, you know, and and so it just really involves the person in front of you may not hear you. The person in front of you may not be able to meet you, but the challenge and the task, you know, that's going to bring results. Okay, is for you to put it out there particularly with Scorpio rising North node in the eighth house and the Pluto polarity point in Aries. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. You want to say anything to the, uh, to the, to the group about uh, how that is relevant or not to your life? Um, yeah, of course. Um, there was, uh, I think it was pretty pretty on, on, on point because everything you said was absolutely true and, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. So, um, you know, if you wanted to put more, you know, about like things that are going on or things that are happening uh, on the community Facebook group page, you know, for people to get a better, better context of your chart, mm-hmm. that's certainly welcome too. Okay. And uh-huh. there's no, you know, I don't want to put any expectations on you. <laughs> You've had enough of that. <laughs> All right, babe, bye. Thank you so much. Thank you, Christine. Thank you. So Christine's going to turn off her video, and Karen is going to turn her video on. Hey, babe, bye. Hey. Okay. Uh, you, guys, you guys got this? Uh, I... You know, you mention in the chat box if this is like going over your head or or you're not getting it or it's hitting and it's making sense or, you know, okay, okay. And then I'll just keep going the kind of the same way. I don't need to, you know, repeat so much uh, with Karen here. But uh, let's get the age right off the bat so I don't have to be counting. Karen, what do you got, 53 or something? Yeah, 53. Just the age, you guys, right? 53. She just got through her Chiron return a little while ago. Okay, you know, she's coming up to her second Saturn return in a couple of years. You know what I mean? And I always go with seven-year cycles. Okay, and her seven-year cycle started at 49. So she's in a 49, 50, 51, 52. She's in a five-year. Yeah? And I use numerology a little bit. It's good to always, you know, just, you know, uh, become familiar with numerology. Uh, It has a lot of crossovers uh, with astrology. So the five year, you know, uh, and then next year is the six. And when she's uh, 56, it'll be a one year again. Okay. You're not clear where to go in solar fire to find the data you showed. Okay. Ready, set. Yeah. I mean, I set up some of this stuff before. You know what I think I should do is I should stop the recording and start it again so that uh, we can have individual charts. Stop recording.